is this is actually the 4.6 liter stroker motor oh, for the Carbon. Oh man. We are here at Precision Sport Industries. This is Sean Myers, he's the owner, and he's gonna show us the sickest BMWs in all of Florida and maybe all of the land. This place is pretty rad. All of the land? All of the land. Okay. Well, I don't That's know. Fair. The land. I think so. Well, there's no. Well, there's probably some sick BMWs in the ocean too. Yeah, there are after that. <laughs> after that container ship went down. Oh, oh, there actually are. So, yeah. but it's sicker than those two because those are at the ground all rusty already. Let's check it out. <laughs> We're gonna start with this because it's my favorite car in the world. E36. This is it. If you've never driven an E36 M3, you need to just go and probably find one on Marketplace or whatever and just go test drive it because. I want to start a Turo where all I ran is E36 and E30 and E46 yeah. M3. But you got to drive a stock one first. Stock. Yeah, totally stock. And then you got to drive one with a little bit of mods. Like coilover, suspension, yeah. front bar, some tuning. They're so good. They're very good. And it has a great size, like the feeling of the car size, because all the cars are so big now. Yeah. These are not big. No. But they no, still... No, but they're, they're still very usable <laughs> every day. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. my daily right now. Like, I got rid of the Mach-E now, and I'm just driving my Techno sedan every yeah. day. It's a great car. I and mean, we've been doing a lot of, I mean, for many years we've worked on these cars, but we're doing a lot of restoration on kind of stock-ish cars. This is a perfect example. We're doing like Euro, we're doing Euro glass headlights on this car. It's super um, nice too. We're doing just a regular service of some of the stuff we found that was wrong. I think it had some radiator work, some other things that we're doing. Um, but this is just a typical mechanical restoration, super low mile, I think it's a 60,000 mile car. Yeah, it's nice. Um, and it's it's mint. I yeah, mean, it's, it's very it's, clean. It's super nice. New you can really noses. tell by how black everything is, because this <laughs> yeah. tends to get like gray. whitish gray. Yeah. <laughs> type of color. Yep. Um, it's got all the proper screws and bolts and zinc plating still on stuff. And look how clean the engine bay is, a Vanos unit, oil filter housing, all super, super clean. Obviously, yeah. it's been tainted with the Florida. Yeah, uh, we have, we're fighting the pollen. The pollen right now. Right now. Which is a nightmare. You can um, see my car, it's so bad. Yeah, it's a nightmare. But so this is a little bit of a plus, right? Because it's got better tires. Like a little bit updated brakes. Yeah. You know, stuff that kind of hides but makes yeah, the driving is. experience better. Yeah, but it's mostly a, a bone stock car and that's what the that's what the guy wanted. He located the car. Um, this is one of the cars that Drew had. Oh, okay. Um, and so we've got customer bought it, we're doing some things to it. Nice. Um, yeah, and it's cool to see this stuff because for years we used to see these clapped out cars come in, zero door panels. That's my favorite. Yeah. Car comes or, in. or they open the door and the panel stays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cars come in with no door panels. E36s have a bad rap because the interior was made, really the yeah. car was made to be recyclable. That was a huge yep. thing. But the problem with that was is it made it kind of not last. So it's yeah, not basically, a long lasting car. If you type E36 and plastic in on the internet, you'll be able to find out every single thing that fails on it because they use plastic for so many interior panel pieces and clips and all that and window regulator pieces and when it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Yeah, and, and it does and they have to be replaced because the thing is, is the literally door panels literally fall apart. We run into it a lot. Yeah. We do a window regulator. Cool story. You might need a door panel. Yeah. That's your customer. And we have to go through that. And, it, and it's funny because we did a restoration and we finished about a year ago now. It's that Gulf Blue E36 that we did with the yeah. S54. And we did a ground up paint and everything on that car. And it was a car a guy bought for three grand. He saw it in a farm. Literally, he was driving. <laughs> saw an E36 parked on a farm. The best. He bought the car. He brought it in, and every time we would take a door panel or interior off to get the car ready to go to paint, it would literally disintegrate. Disintegrate. Yeah. And then finding that stuff is hard too, because no one really repops that stuff. So no, it's like I mean, they luckily, make new brackets and glue on. I pieces. mean, BMW luckily now makes black door panels, okay. which are super expensive. They make brand new ones. We actually, available. we actually put them in that car. Okay. Um, That's but, cool. But um, it's just it's part of it it's kind of cool because you have to do some work to restore the car but it's also kind of not cool when you think you bought a nice car and you pull the door panel off and it comes off in 36 pieces well we kind of talked about this too because like this is a new classic car like we were growing up it was all like your parents or whoever 
you saw a 60s Mustang or Camaro or even early 70s, you're like, oh, look at that. That's like, that's a classic car. Like, that's what that, that guy is driving around. And now that's this. Like, yeah, this I mean, is con the same thing, It's but it's a lot more plastic. Yeah, I mean, part <laughs> of my love for BMW was from the E36. Right. Like, when I was started, first started driving, I would see, I always see, like, a Techno Valley Coupe and a Storo Blue Coupe oh, in yeah. Lake Mary. And um, I was, my, I, luckily enough, I was able to get a sedan. My first car was an E36 M3 sedan that my dad got me. Perfect. Because um, I had my the grades that I was supposed to have, I guess. Perfect. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I had that car, and that was really my love for BMWs. And so now I you have, have a special, this. Yeah, now I'm around BMWs. Shitty E36s all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, are, Sometimes. that are nicer now. Sometimes. So this is really cool. Yeah, black on black, Cosmo. Looks like it's got invaders in it that are really, really nice. Yeah, it's got the M contour wheels. Um, I think this car is OEM radio. OEM radio. So it's oh, last year. So it has hi fi, uh, Harman Kardon, and all the yeah. goodies. Yeah. It's a secret car. And, and there you go. Get a good Ooh. shot of the stock muffler. You I got one on mine. I got one on mine. I won't change it because it's yeah. part of the car. Uh, like I was telling my wife about this yesterday. The muffler is super tall and huge, and you can see it from almost all angles. But that's like become a look of the car that I like. So I will I put OEM exhaust on everything. My car has active headers, uh, like a mid pipe, and then a muffler in the middle back to the stock exhaust. So it's just a tiny bit louder than stock. Yeah, perfect. but it just looks really nice. Yeah, it's cool. This is just a neat original car. Yeah, it's really nice. Kind of see. Um, It'd be a joy to drive too. Yeah, All right, now we got E30. Burke. Yeah, so we do, you know, part of what we do here is we do a really wide range of stuff that all involves BMW. So this is here for mechanical restoration. The M6 that's there, we're actually doing a manual swap. Oh, so these cool. have the SMG issue where the SMG pump goes. And every okay. time we hit BMW up, the price is more for the SMG pump. So now yeah. I think we're at 13 grand for the SMG pump for Ooh. these cars. Uh. So what uh. we've been doing, we've done a couple, we've done two M5s, now we're on M6. We're doing the OEM conversion. So we actually use the, the V8 M3 uh, transmission, yep. but everything else we buy from BMW, the pedal, this, this, all, all of the inside interior pieces that make it manual transmission. Sweet. We do all the coding for that and the tuning and it becomes OEM manual. Um, still about ten grand to do that. Yeah, but it basically. But it's cheaper than it's just a an perma. SMB it's a perma fix. Yeah, because then you you spend less, but then you have a permanent solution, and you have a manual M6. Yeah, which is um, sick. Which is super cool. And the cool they thing do is, exist, is that they, but do, they're they just... do exist. And the funny thing was, when these cars were new, no one want everyone wanted the manual on the internet, and then when all the cars were at the dealership, no they're one wanted all, manual. Yeah, the SMG. Because I remember going to fields, and they had bunch of M5s in stock and my salesperson was like hey I got all these M5s every single one was manual no one no one was buying those cars and now and now they're the an most E60 yeah. manual is like absurd money yeah. they're it's the most four times the cost after. of an SMG one yeah. they're the most sought after it's crazy um, I will say the SMG on the highway and drivability is better in these cars because the engine was designed and everything was designed with the SMG trans in mind but again having a manual and a V10 what, I guess the only other place you can get that is a Viper. Yeah, that's right? not the same. I mean, same. so it's not the same, but I mean. <laughs> not the same. Not the same. It's not even but, the same um, engine. Like V10, but it's more of a truck engine than anything else. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, these cars are really good too. And the SMG in these cars wasn't bad. It wasn't like the first rendition. Because this would have been SMG2 or 3. It's 3. 3. Two so it's is pretty e, good. 2 is E46. Yeah. And they had SMG1, which was actually E36. Euro only. E36 yeah. had it. Um, SMG1, and they actually brought SMG1 on early E46s too. I have one of those gearboxes. Um, yeah, and those are, those are bad. Yeah, those are bad too. they're um, awful. Uh, but it's the cool like a, every time you shift, it's like a hammer is hitting you in the back of the head. It's like, rap, bang, rap, bang. It's yeah. so bad. It's either super aggressive or it's Slippy super, de super delayed. Yeah. Um, you know, really so SMG2, just for the people not watching or that don't know, um, it's basically a complete manual gearbox with actuators on it that does all of your motions. So it's like nothing is the is any different except there's a pump in there that pumps fluid to be able to run all the hydraulics to yeah. push the clutch in for you because there's no clutch pedal and then actuate each gear independently. Yeah. So you could imagine in the 90s that wasn't that good. No. And even <laughs> I mean really like a we, we did a recently we did a new SMG pump on an E46 M3. A guy wanted SMG. It's still not from, great. from new. 
Uh, we put it in. It was it was crispy. It felt nice, but like. I just don't like it. It's still delayed. It's you have to learn how to drive on it, yeah. basically. But you know, the cool thing is, this is a manual swap that we do. But we also do almost every week an E46 M3 manual swap. Yeah. Which on that car, which is different from this, you can leave the it's, gearbox. It's the same. Yeah, it is the same gearbox. We have to machine the bell housing, and, and then we have to code to code the uh, code the modules and then code the ECU. But those are a cool swap because that becomes a full OEM manual with cruise control working. The PDC works, like all of the parts work that make the car BMW. And even when you plug it in uh, to the OBD at the dealership, it it's a manual M3. The only way you would know it was swapped is if you look at the VIN, you can right. tell if the car originally was SMG. For sure. um, this is a little bit different because the actual SMG transmissions for these cars is built into, into the it. transmission. Yeah. So you have to forego that and get the manual transfer from a V8. Yeah. Um, but it's basically the same process to do it, um, but it's, it's cool. cool it's, it's a neat thing, and it's cool because it's OEM. It's yeah, all it OEM parts. Yeah, it new life into there's a no, car, There's too. no cutting. Like, there's no crazy modifications that's needed, which is cool for me because I want to do stuff the way BMW would have done it. So yeah. if this guy takes his car to freaking Michigan, breaks down, takes it to BMW, they they're can not, service. They can plug it in. They can they can work on it. It's, yeah. it, it's a, still a real car. It's not something that only my boy can fix. Yeah, in my garage. So that's so it's got know. some weird slave on it, or weird wiring, 100%. or weird yeah. box or that Motec controls it, or whatever. Right. Like, it doesn't need. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's OEM. It's OEM it's everything. Very um, cool. Yeah. So um, E thirty thing. What's going on with this? I see lots of suspension stuff. So it's got bars on it. Yeah. And so this is a car um, that we're doing a full restoration on. It actually just came back from the body shop, and we did the we only painted the engine bay this time. Ted, where's my engines? What motor's going in here? That's it too. Okay. So we did um, S52, 3.2 liter M3 motor, basically. Yeah, from the Cosmos, exactly like the Cosmos car. Yep. We'll do the full bolt-on package on that car. Cool. We're actually rebuilding the motor at the it's at the machine shop. Sweet. We're just about to get it back. So what we did is we took the car to the body shop and painted the engine bay, OEM, like the satin OEM finish. We removed some of the clamps and stuff that are on there from the M20, so it cleans up the engine bay. Nice. So it looks OE. So that's all been painted. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the motor in it, S52, built. All full bolt on. Make yep. like probably two. I make like two fifty, two sixty. Yeah. Nothing crazy. But the thing about um, the SCD two is the grunt. Yeah, like it's works. like a V eight. Yeah. Realistically, like every time I drive my car and I you just roll into it at like twenty two hundred RPM, it's like it just digs and goes. Yeah, and if you guys, I mean, we we've shown a couple of videos on our channel about about the swaps and stuff that we do. But to me, like the E thirty with S fifty two is the best it's like matched to the chassis it makes the right power it it's just a perfect car it's pretty spicy honestly it's spicy but like we've built s54 full bolt on yeah. e30s like we did that wagon with s54 and it made like 340 wheel and yep. e30 yeah. that car was like all over the, it, it was all over the place and for me it's cool it makes big power it's a cool s54 yeah but the like it's not it's, it's too a much. wear out it's too much yeah. it's a wear out so this is because the engine that came in these <laughs> the spiciest engine made 160 wheel 150 yeah. wheel yeah. so when you add 90 to 100 horsepower and a shitload more torque yeah. like it's a lot that rear suspension trust me i have a ti for the s54 yeah. and it's it's a lot for the chassis and it's only yeah. 350 horsepower but again like most customers their their budget is within the s52 and yeah. it's and really if you gave a car that had an s52 swap to somebody that had never driven an e30 yeah you told them to go take it they would think that car feels good but they wouldn't say like oh it must have been swapped because it's like not balanced it doesn't yeah you know, it, it's really cool so we do a lot of those because that's what i recommend on e30s yeah so we're doing that we have another car in the parking lot there's a yellow car out there that's waiting for the exact same thing yeah, that's cool. We're doing another one with that. So, and we're doing everything to this. We're doing full suspension upgrades. We're going to get into the seats and interior. We'll actually do the convertible top. Sick. And a car will get a full paint job. Well, what we do with these is we segment them. So, we did the engine bay first. Then we're going to do the motor and everything in. And then the car will go to full paint after we get the motor and everything in. Yeah, that way you guys um, don't. Well, that way the car's not at paint for six months and we have nothing done. Right. Just sort of a way we work. And we use Samuels Auto. Who we'll talk about later who painted our wagon project i've been yeah. working with him for 20 years it's like he's done a lot of body shop. stuff too yeah it's he's cool. amazing brad's amazing he's paints yeah. a lot of bmws he knows what's up and yeah it's a good it's a good situation so that's another another kind of thing that we do let's talk about some other stuff so this this uh, this is a 435 so this is here for some regular maintenance and service we're changing the ekp and we're actually doing a EKP? full it's the fuel module the fuel okay. pressure module it regulates the fuel like it's a module that 
plugs into the low pressure pump and regulates the fuel. It's an OEM. Basically, module. so what happens is the that EKP box will control the pump's RPM to keep yeah. the voltage. It's like it, it, instead it controls of the, the communication regulator. basically between like high pressure pumps and low pressure. That's how okay, it works I with it. it, and it, they go, they go bad. So we're doing this is here for repair. So we're replacing the EKP and we're doing a full update to the car, all the modules and everything we're doing an update. Got so it. that's connected to ISTA. This is another just uh, repair and maintenance job uh, that yeah. we do typically Sick. during the it's day. It's cool because like these t these cars are like really for a long time the only place you could go as a dealer yeah. and get bent over. Like yeah. it's bad. And not have a, like I, I feel like the dealer, you just have no connection with the people. Like yeah. you go in, you drop it off. They might have a waiting room that's sick with coffee and a TV or whatever. But like what comes down to it is like, there's no connection. You don't know anybody. When you leave the dealer and later you're talking about your car, you say, oh, I went to the dealership. Like yeah. that's it. Yeah. Whereas like when you take it to a shop like this, there's like a connection there and you like yeah. have something. Well, they're not, the they're not enthusiasts. And, yeah. I mean, and you know, for me, this business has been my whole life because this is what I like. If I didn't like doing this, I wouldn't do it. It's yeah. not the easiest. It's not the easiest. Oh business. no, it's a hard it's dollar. A, it's a, it's for a sure. lot. Of, it's a lot of work for for me and, and the guys and everything that we do. But you have to love it, and I love it. And when I'm not here, I'm doing something else with cars, going yeah. and traveling to events, like going to the compound, whatever. We're hanging out. It's always car related. Right. So I mean, it's all a part of this, but. Supporting these cars and having the proper tools, a lot of people don't have that stuff. And we yeah. we have you know we have the ISTAs which is connected to BMW. We have ISTAs that are off the grid. We have Auto Logics. We have a ton of tools to be able to do everything, so people can come here, and we can do everything the dealer can do, except they can connect to Germany when there's really an issue, <laughs> right. like a crazy issue. But even they still, you got to connect them. the dealer to do that. So that way you uh -huh. handle all of 100%. it and you take it there. Yeah. They handle that one thing that needs to happen and you get it back. Correct. So, I mean, we, we have really good capabilities and we can also do we can also do workarounds. We can do custom coding and stuff here That's cool. where the dealership will tell customers, well, we can do this module, but you have to replace all the ones in that line. Yeah. Well, we can replace one code just that module and fix right. the car for way cheaper for them. Yeah. So there's a lot of other solutions that, you know, independent shops like us are able to offer customers, which, you know, which help them out. Yeah, it's really cool. So, it's spaghetti noodle exhaust. That's the active equaling uh, mid pipe. Oh, didn't David that design sell? that? I don't know. Maybe, maybe David was I feel like that's it. David's he was there, he was there when David. I remember David hearing that. There. Look at that spaghetti noodle equal length madness. <laughs> Yeah, it looks kind of crazy. Um, it, so the sound is the deal, though. It fixes the fart. It does of the of the F8 of the F8X. Uh, that's a that's the purpose of it. Uh, the guy actually has a, has a small kid. You know, I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and the car's a little bit resonant. It's a little bit loud for him, so we're actually putting small resonators in. Okay. Um, on the street portions there. Okay. So that's what we're doing. And then we're doing some aerodynamic work to it. This, this is a stock rear box. Yeah, this is a stock box with uh, aftermarket tips cool. and then the whole midsection is active auto work. Yep. Uh, which we you know we've worked with active since I started the shop. Yeah the guys at active are, are the OG. Yeah. Like I've been doing this 16 years now. They've been doing it double that like, oh, like yeah. 35 years. I like, remember like yeah. as a kid like seeing active stickers on like a 95 M3 yeah. like cuz they did flash tuning or chip tuning for the 95 M3 well, back then and Well when Carl, you know, when Carl and Mike started started the shop, they had E21s. Yeah. They that's had, you know, that's what, and I always talk to Carl about that because I have a bunch of, you know, vintage BMWs and I always joke with Carl that I'm going to send my E12 down there so he can chip tune it. Yeah, with the <laughs> ostrich cable and boot pins yeah, and all yeah, this stuff. Yeah, because that's where they started. So, yeah, it's cool. you know, again, but they're the same as us. They, they're an enthusiast based place. They love what they're doing. Like, they're part of the BMW community. Yeah, so it's cool. It's cool. Um, so, maintenance on this, resonator. It looks like it's got some mods too. Yeah, it has, the, it has the Power Flex like double ear upgrade because normally it. there's only one bushing back here. And that's a problem on these? Yeah, I mean, they wear out, but the problem is OEM has one bushing here in the back. There's actually a, a, literally an empty hole there. So, the upgrade is to do a double mount. Is it because like they this. have a double mount and something else? I, I don't know. Okay. But I think. I think um, it's possible, yeah. Maybe on the on the track cars or That's something. Cool. I never noticed how big um, the fins are on that yeah. cooling. You know, and, and F80s. You know, these cars. Uh, 
we do a ton of them, but they have their they're starting to show their 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 age. issues yeah. and their age. And I just had this conversation with a customer yesterday is these have an issue that we've been seeing. A lot of people on the forums have been talking about rod bearings. These do not have rod bearing issues. What they have an issue with is the charge cooler that sits on the top of the motor leaks internally uh, into the J pipe. Cool it. Yep, into the J pipe, into the motor. So if you guys have F80s, please check your, not your coolant tank, but the charge cooler tank in the back, make, make sure, sure there's, there's fluid down. in there, because if you're losing fluid, it's and going in your motor. Been, yeah, that's not good, and which we've is actually, water in your motor. Yeah, it's coolant and water. So like basically what happens is then you have a bearing failure, main or rod bearings, yep. and then we send the Blackstone report, and, and, there's, they coolant fall, in and there's coolant in the oil. Um, it's it's a huge Checks issue, out. and you the don't Fords know. The do that too. The the diesels because they, they have air to water cooler on them, yeah. and they'll have the same problem. It's yeah, crazy. and the, and the, the 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 typical difficult thing is is that you don't see it leak, right? Because it leaks internal. in the J pipe, and the J pipe's behind the motor, so it's a it's an issue. We we've seen it, and we're doing that. We're also doing when we walk next door into Adam's shop, like we do crank hubs. Crank hub is yeah. another issue on these cars. I wouldn't say it's extreme, but it's well, a, when you it's start putting thing. power down, it could be extreme. Yeah, but we've seen it on stock cars. Yeah, we've seen sure. it on. Uh, we had a couple of M2 competitions in one week. The guys were at the track. Cars were bone stock, not even a tune, and they spun the crank hub. So, you know, it's just you know part of having a shop like this and being around these cars is learning what that stuff is and yeah. being able to educate customers on it and then being able to do the service the crank i have up a service. theory with the bmw and the crank up thing good my theory is that bmw designed that to not have a qa and not do that so that when people modded them they had failures so you would not modify them i've heard that conspiracy before but also like they got to know that immediately someone's going to make a fix for it because there was a fix like a year after the car was dropped 100 percent. so it's yeah. like and we use the four pin hub from evolve okay from my, my friends at evolve it's a four pin if you drill the crank to put the pin pens in but yeah. to do that job the valve cover has to come oh, off yeah. the oil pan has to come off pull the, the transmission car. back it's a huge job and what we do a lot of times is like we're doing over there today is we pair that service with all the other services. Yeah. Like valve cover, gasket, oil pan. Like all that stuff is new when we take it off, but some customers do charge pipes, they do a new charge cooler. Yeah, maybe all that a clutch stuff. when the transmission split. Yeah, like a whatever. lot of different a lot of different things happen, but that's become a service we do a lot. And it, back in the day, we still which we still do, is we do a lot of rod bearing services for yeah. the V eight M threes and for the for the uh, you know straight six S fifty four M threes. I just did rod bearings on my S fifty four yesterday. There you go. Serviceable so, item. Every 80 hours of drifting time, new rod bearings. This is ridiculous, good, but that's uh, how it happens. That's a, yeah, it does. For but it's 80 hours. This is not a scare tactic. It's 80 hours of 8,700 plus RPM. Because my rev limiter on that's 8,900, right? Yeah. So that's 1,000 RPM past the usable, yeah. what it was meant well, for. Well, that's a good interval for you to remember to do it. Yeah. Because you don't want to pay like... 16 grand for a rebuild on that no bike. and like i can do rod bearings in like six hours with my car because it's set up to receive them very quickly yeah and i just pull the inspection thing at 80 hours and have a look at it and it, my hour count starts at 3500 rpm so it doesn't count any hours until you're above 3500 because oh. below 3500 you yeah, could drive it good. for 20 years and not have a bearing failure. Yeah. All of it's from yeah. rattling the shit out of it up top. Yeah. But anytime <laughs> you measure hours, you're talking about a race car. Oh, yeah. And yeah, then yeah, this yeah. is another discussion I have every day. Someone calls, hey, I have a, I have a Brady 46 and 3 I picked it up at 60,000 miles. I don't think I need to do the rod bearings yet. And I said, well, what is that based on? He's like, oh, I only have 60,000 miles. I'm like, your car is 20 years old also. Yeah. And you don't know what's happened. Right. And so the real answer is, the truth is, is that if you have a car that you want to keep you just and it them. needs rod bearings you need to do the rod bearings yeah it's the same way with the f80s people come in i don't think i need to do my crank cub because i'm only i only have like bolt-ons well like we see it on stock cars yeah so the answer is if you're going to keep the car do the preventative maintenance it right. just makes sense because trust me you don't want to buy no a 30k motor no because you decided you to also do down pipes instead of rod bearings my thing <laughs> is it's not even that it's I got in the car, I don't want to floor it because I'm scared of the crank hub. Like, 100%. oh, every time, roll the dice, we doing this, and you bang a gear and you spin the crank hub. And it's like, ah, oh, I could have fixed that for whatever the cost is, 
which is like a quarter or less of a motor. Yeah, it's thirty five hundred bucks. Yeah, for parts and labor. So, yeah. I mean, so but you know the other thing is is like if you have a car that you're wanting to keep and it's an investment for you, you search and do those things, and that's what we started doing. Like when we start moving over here, we have an E forty six on the lift that we're doing a subframe reinforcement. Yeah. Everybody talks about the big three. Of, of an E46 that it needs, which is this, the rod bearings, which we just mentioned, the subframe reinforcement, which we, can, which we talk about. That's more common than anything. That is the most common. Yeah. And and the Venos, which I don't agree with it being in the big three. I think may, people made that up because of the price. I think so too. I because think also price. like a Venos is a one-time lifetime change. Yeah. Like when you yeah. do it and you do it right, it's done forever yeah. and yeah. and i think rod bearings and the crank hub and that stuff is also for most users a one and done like you're gonna do that and it's gonna be a hundred thousand miles so it needs to be done again yeah for sure i mean the crank hub will probably never need never. to be done because yeah. that's a permanent solution it's a for little sure. bit different than something wearing but the Venus, it, you know, everybody comes in like, I want the big three. And I'm like, let me do the Venus test on the S54. It's and it, good, does, and it good. passes. Yeah. I'm not going to pay because what we do is we use Dr. Venus unit, yep. which is an OEM unit that's been fully rebuilt and tested. And updated. And, uh, yeah, it's updated with the various seals, which are better than the OEM ones. Yep. We put those in and then we do a valve adjustment. And, the, you know, the Venus unit alone is, I think, 1900 bucks. Yeah. So. Um, and if it doesn't need it, it doesn't need it. 100%. And also, like, when it fails, you can take it in and get it fixed. 100%. When it's it not fails, like you, a, you go from an M3 to a 330 because you don't have the, no you don't have the dual vanos. It's yeah. all gone. You don't have the dual vanos. But but again, it's not a it's not a f engine failure like a rod Correct. bearing. You know, it's not an engine failure like a crank hub. Now, this is a um, another car that's here for service. This is a diesel. This is a actually a 60,000 mile E70 X5D. He knows on there, dude. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. yeah. 60,000 miles. These are great cars. Right, X5 diesel. And anybody that has never driven a BMW diesel from this era, it is amazing. The car is amazing. The steering uh, weight, the torque that these have, they literally drive like M3. I'm like addicted to these. I have, these two, I have two of them. Yeah, they're great. And uh, my dad drives one. They're super reliable kids. too. They're reliable, they're they're cool, and they're nice, and you can pick them up for like a really nice one for like 10 grand. And they're pretty economical to drive too. Yeah, they get really good gas mileage. The diesel- They get the best gas mileage because there's yeah. no gas involved. Yeah, well true. They get the best diesel mileage. One time, so I used to be a car salesman way back in the day when I was a kid, and I was selling this diesel truck. And this is like a fol folklore story, but it's funny. And it had no gas pedal, like the actual pedal was broken, just the rod was sticking there. And this guy's like, I can't even buy this truck without a gas pedal. I'm like, there's no gas involved. That's an accelerator pedal and I'll take care of it before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, just funny, stupid shit. That's but yeah, funny. these are great. I had one of these for a while and I have a couple friends that have them. They're like 30 miles to the gallon. Super quiet, drive nice, very low maintenance, and they're like, the power is great. Yeah, they're great to drive. There's some aftermarket really, support for them, which is cool. Yeah, yeah, there is. And, and it, I mean, they're just cool vehicles. And to have a clean one like this, another car that we have that's, you see a lot of these now. My, all my techs, well, two of my techs have these. Because they're so cheap and they're, cheap, they're economical. And they're, and they're super nice, and then they, they drive sell. amazing. If you ever guys have a chance to drive one, go drive it. Yeah, it's super it's good. Um, yeah, what else we got? So we have a, uh, this is a G21, so this is a G series. This is out of my realm, I know yeah. nothing about these. This is an M, I mean, this is an M440, so this is B58. Okay. It's a, this is a new coupe. So it's this, so this, so this car, yeah. Yeah, with really the really lights good. underneath. Yeah, and it's floor, Flush, floor, floor mounted. Lights, so you can do all the, all the lowness. Dang, um, sick. Um, Sorry, but, I didn't interrupt you. No, I you're thought good. The rack was you're good. Yeah, it works well, and we we put it in ground. A lot of people don't do it in ground, but because we have so many low cars, especially because we do a lot of Adams alignments, yeah. his stuff is literally like, and Vince, cars are half oh, an inch Vince, off the ground. I was just at his shop yesterday. Vince is a really really good detail guy. His cars are like fashionista low, yeah. like they are like. They're, I don't know he how. He calls it hella flush. He can't drive them. I don't know how he drives them. He drives I'm them at 30 talking miles like an hour. talking like front lip this high off the ground. Like I was under his E46 the other day. I don't know if you've seen it. And the diff cover is missing half of the fins. I know, he broke it off. Because it's like been ground, no, not broken, ground down yeah, from scraping right. a little bit all the time. Like he's insane. He, has, he had to pull his car out of his driveway because I was pulling my car in. And it was like this, out of his driveway. <laughs> Yeah, like all like powers. Twenty minutes. It was. Yeah, yeah. It was. 
I mean, literally, we have a flat ground coming into the shop. And it scrapes. And it scrapes. It's ridiculous. It's, it's annoying. All of his cars are that it's low. It's super annoying. And then he yells that they're still not yet low enough yet. Yeah, yeah. But he is... He um, can only turn his wheel this much. He is a super <laughs> unique it. guy that we've worked it's on cool. his cars from day one. His E46, we've worked on that car for so many years. We just did complete the manual swap on I it, too. That, yeah. Which, again, is a, is a valuable thing. But like, it's a Phoenix on, on, on cinnamon. cinnamon. Which is super Fur. rare because you couldn't order that. He had to ask them and beg BMW to do it. And they were like, yeah, we'll do it. The reason they wouldn't do it is because it's kind of a weird combination it on works, paper. It works, though. But it works. And it's super rare. And he has a clean Phoenix because he's a detailer. He's obsessive. His Phoenix Yellow is Phoenix Yellow. I'm sure people have seen a lot of Phoenix Yellow E46s. Yeah. And every time you see one, the color is different. But yeah. his is like the catalog color. How it was supposed to be. And his interior is literally perfect. perfect. It's never been restored. It's perfect. That's from him running towels. The only thing that's and not perfect is the underside and the fenders. Correct. Um, but I mean, this is an M440. We're here. We're doing a custom exhaust for it. Okay. Um, the crazy thing is, is that this is the same car that the E36 was over there just 30 years now. Yeah. This is a, this is a 3 Series coupe. It's now disguised as a 4 Series, but I look at the argue. size. I would argue what he's saying. It's not the same at all. It's not the same, but it it has about twenty more suspension arms. <laughs> it has. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. In, it has, in it weighs a thousand in, pounds in each, more. Uh, each wheel, there's twenty more. Arms. Yeah, there's twenty more suspension. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the bushing count on E36 versus this is probably ten to sixty five. <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> They're this has, good cars, this has yeah. the V58, which is the same motor that's in the Supra. Supra that. um, again, modifiable. Which arguably, on. I feel like, is a better engine than the S58. It's different. It's different. You I just, think if you're going to make power and track the car, I feel like the V58 is actually a better motor. I don't know about that. but Power band, cost. you got to drive the two cars. We just finished on the dyno with, with two cars. One was full bolt-on Supra and one was full, full bolt on X-Drive M3. Yeah. M3 made 805 to the wheels and 710 torque, and the uh, Super made, it was an auto Supra. I mean, it was a manual Supra, sorry. It made like 674 and 625 torque because, yeah. of, because of the manual. Yeah. Both cars are very similar, but they drive completely different. Because yeah. one single turbo, B58 single turbo. Yeah. The s 58s twin, and they both have pros and cons to each one. I, mean, I think if, what I was saying is that I think if you're doing a big build, like if I was swapping one of those motors into a car and cost wasn't a thing, I still feel that the B50A has a little bit more, more to offer. I think the, the, I think the B58, if you measure the amount of parts and support that the B58 has versus S58, yeah. B58 has more because it's been out longer. Well, that S58, and you have the super nerds. Correct. And you have the whole super community, like yeah. Titan. I didn't whole, mean nerds in a bad way. I meant as in a developing way. Of course. <laughs> and you have the, like guys at Titan that have been working on the B58 specifically because yeah. that's the motor that's in the Supra. So there's a lot more little intricacy parts Correct. for that. The S58 is still being built, but like power for power, it's, it's M versus non-M. Oh, yeah. And it the, is. the one cool thing the S58 has is it has dual high-pressure pumps, yeah. which the B58 has a single. Um, but anyway, they're, they're, it's the cool. It's modifiable. We can unlock the DMEs. We have to send the DMEs to Finland, but we can unlock them. Um, so it's cool. You can do a lot of tuning stuff with it. Um, yeah. It's I mean, cool that you've guys have gotten that far, and, and all those cars are very updatable and from from a start to finish kind of thing. That's 100%. Cool. That's yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I'm old, dude. I'm Same. that old guy at the skate park, dude. I really am. I use that analogy all the time. Like, I don't like want a lot of the new stuff. Yeah. I want a simple old car that like maybe this is faster, maybe this is quieter, and maybe those things matter. But like when I'm going to drive a car, I just want like something that just works and is good. Yeah. And it doesn't. I mean, everything I own, feet. everything I own, you know, is is an older. Whether it's an E70 X5D or E36s, E46s, I have a bunch of 70s and 60s BMWs because yeah. that's the stuff that I love the most. However. For the shop and for what we do here, when we do repair and we do service and we do performance, we need to stay relevant with the new stuff. Well, that's what I was saying. It's yeah. cool that you do that because you're, yeah. I'm not saying you're not into this, but I was saying you have a passion that's fed from something older, but you're still yeah. at the top of the game for the newest yeah. stuff. And it's cool to have that wide range. I mean, today, literally, this was this video was planned, but all of this is a normal day here. This is literally yeah. just us walking in. And it's cool because you guys get to see you know, we'll show you some of the two projects, which are so opposite. 
the yeah. wagon and the M2. Um, but it's cool because you get to do that and then we get to learn like when I buy a project car for the shop like the M2 that we did I get it also for the guys to learn when we build course. the car and take it apart because even if you work at the dealer You don't get to take a motor out of the new M3. Yeah. You don't get to take a motor out of an M2 You don't get to modify and do the stuff that we do so it's cool It's cool to be there like on the cutting edge, but it's also cool to be able to do the restoration stuff on the older cars Yeah, which I guess I will move over here to the C46. This is my favorite job right here. <laughs> that sounded very sincere. very sincere. I got really good at this because I did a lot of them for our school cars and for other things. But yeah, it's a, it's a job. And the thing is, it's a job that's really, it's, I call it prosumer at best. Like you have to have a welder, education, a friend with a fire extinguisher, like, like yeah, yeah. a and way to, to move this huge amount of weight around. This is, I feel like the best bang for the buck to take to a place to get done because it's a process, dude. Yeah, it is. And we and we do it so often now. We have a whole series. We, we have a reason that it's on this lift because it's close to our fab area. So we can have the welder and everything here. And we, we didn't even say what the job was. This is a subframe reinforcement. <laughs> I, was leading, I was leading him yeah, into it. It's a subframe reinforcement for E46. I'm not gonna, this is an M3, but this issue affects oh, all E46. Even automatic ones. Even auto, <laughs> even sedan, even convertible, even coupe. All, it's of all of them. BMW, so it's, you fucking blew it with this. And we can. And let's <laughs> well, we can. The cool thing is, is, this is at a point where we can actually talk about what the issue yeah, is. Yeah, it's a great what, position. What the sure. issue is, and the issue really is this design here. See this bolt. So this bolt passes through the bushing, which is on the subframe, and then it gets bolted in. Well, the problem is the movement of the car is like this. Yep. So it's on a flat surface, and it's changing the floor mm, let's yep. flex the floor flex the floor until the floor cracks and it cracks and this car is actually a super clean car it's customer it's well taken care of car lower mileage it doesn't have any of the normal cracks that you would see here but what happens is we've seen cars that this is almost about to fall out yep. and it's cracked all the way through here yep. all the way up in here so what you actually do when you do the sub, when you do the subframe reinforcement this is, is good dude this is the best yeah. one i think i've ever seen this one's in nice shape it's in nice shape. But the other thing that I will say on this video that is something that I hear a lot about is people bring us an E46 M3 and I ask them, do you know if the subframe's been done? Yeah, I, my boy that did it, he did a subframe inspection and he said my subframe was good so I didn't need it needed to yeah, be done. Yeah, but you can't do it unless the subframe's out. 100%. Yep. And so unless someone took the subframe out like this and actually ground this down and looked at it, they haven't done a subframe inspection. So yep. just some info. <laughs> also, <laughs> if it's perfect right now and you put it back together, in 5,000 miles, it could be exploded. Yeah, or 1,000 miles. <laughs> it's, it, again, it's a preventative maintenance thing that if you're gonna yeah. have an E46 M3, you just do it. it needs to get done. That's it. And so there's a v wide variety of actually subframe reinforcements you can do. We tend to do the plates and we add a little bit of welds and, and to tighten everything up. But there's also, uh, something called events bar where you actually add in an additional rail that's in the system which we've also done that's a little bit more extreme the normal run of the mill is we have our special plates and the plates actually get welded in place to then tie it in with the chassis more and spread the load of what's going on here and what's going on here it also has plates that go here and then up at top that are welded in and that fixes the issue um, and yeah, you have to do the ones up top too. Don't don't skim out. Yeah, you have to do everything. Uh, you just it's a one and done thing. Again, yeah. this is a fix. And the other thing that you do one and done is we do the subframe bushings, which are one, two, three, four. We do the R tabs, which are here, and we do the diff. And these diff bushings are kind of crazy. They were actually kind of falling out. Like this one's about to. This one did fall out, as yeah. you can see. Literally, that's how it was. It was separated. So what, what, what will happen is, is we'll do all power flex. And we use power flex because it doesn't have a crazy durometer. It's not yeah. a drift car, so we're not gonna put aluminum. Yeah, the, the stuff vehicle in. harmonics don't get much more. Yeah, know. yeah, and so Soft this is like, things. they're two piece bushings, so they're easier to install, but they also never fail. So this is like a permanent solution for the subframe and for the art tabs. We also do the same in the case. So the case has two bushings and then in the actual subframe, there's a front bushing, which is up here, which also gets replaced. 
And we usually do an OEM one there. Yeah, the OEM one here and then the diff is normally what I do because that transmits the most noise. Correct. And then if you are doing anything race car related and you want to go solid on the subframe, monoball on the trailing arm bushings and then keep the diff ones OEM still. Even on a race, for me at least, that's what I've yeah. seen. Because you want some sort, the diff can actually hurt itself being solid mounted because it's got so many vibrations that need to be absorbed. Um, so it's, yeah, it's we've seen broken we've seen broken cases from solid mounts in yeah. the diff. Um, the other issue though is that on an E46 to replace the diff bushings in the in the case or in the uh, cover, rather you have to buy a new cover. The whole cover. You have to buy the whole cover to yeah. get that. So the reason we do PowerFlex in the cover is because co the covers are very expensive and customers yeah. don't want to do that. So we'll do a PowerFlex again. PowerFlex are Softer. just a little bit yeah. more than OE, but we'll do the OE bushing uh, in this in front, front here. Um, which is it's laid out. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, this is kind of a quick overview, but this is super important for these cars, and this is one of the big three we talked about. If you um, don't do it and you keep driving and you deal with it, it ends up being a massive problem that is very difficult to fix. Yeah. Like I've had them where they come in, especially non-M cars. I think a lot of the M cars, people are like, oh, it's got power, it's gonna fall apart, and they did it or at least they inspected it and paid attention to it. I've had some E46 325s and 330s that there it is cracked from this mounting point to this mounting point. I'm talking up over the cusp through this pinch weld and the whole thing is like jack the car up and you're like, it's hanging down. Because they just keep yeah. driving it. They're like, oh, there's a clunk, my strut's broken. Meanwhile, yeah. the whole subframe's going like this inside of the car. I mean, this is, this is a car, like cars like this, this, this one is in really good shape, like we said. This is amazing. But, but we've had cars come in, that come in for a subframe reinforcement, that it becomes a subframe and body rebuild re repair. Yeah. That we're literally welding, like he said. All Drilling the out holes. Up and here, it actually will start going up to the top of the shock mount up yeah. there. Like it just becomes a real bad issue on some cars. And the funny thing is, is SMG cars really took it the most because yeah. as he said, the banging transmission and drive tra shaft and all the drivetrain, it gets super worn out. And another thing I'll point out is a lot of times when we do these, we notice play in the drive shaft and in the diff. And so we've started replacing a lot of the differentials. And yeah. for that, we use diffs online. They build all the diffs yeah. for us. Um, that's they, a big they, upgrade. It's, it's nice. It's great, but it's also, that's the the play. There's play, there can be play in the drive shaft and play in the diff, yeah. which then, travels through and it's like makes it's noisy it's it doesn't work so that's again another thing that we've been seeing that we've been doing a lot is yeah, this cool. diffs yeah, this car's got some mods too radio mounted brembos um stainless brake lines yeah, it's got it's super nice got... bbs lms nice. like it's a it's a nice car and this is another car we'll probably uh this is another guy want to do the vanos we're going to do it um it, it, it actually passed the test but he's going to wait and not do that yeah it's cool. uh, rod bearings is next but yeah this is a typical uh Oh, this is the SMG car. We were talking about SMG earlier. You can see the actuator that goes on the back for the actual shifting. It's cool. That's amazing. SMG endo cracks. He must have kept it in the first level of shifting for a while because you put that thing up on level whatever seven, maybe and it's the like SMG a pump went bad for the whole lot. Yeah, he just got a new one. The cutest little water yeah, this pump. This is an M fifty four. Yep. This is Satan's engine. engine. We were yeah. talking about S52 being God's engine. This would be Satan's engine. I have a saying with those. In BMW, if it's an engine, N means no. <laughs> That's my thing. That's fair. N55 is a little bit better. It's better. It makes less power, um, but it's more reliable. I got an N55 but... swap 318 Ti. Okay. With the auto. Okay. With the six speed. It's pretty sick. Yeah. But like, it's still every time I drive it, I'm like, what's gonna break today on the motor? Um, they keep people in business because they got so many weird problems that are unsolvable by the normal mechanic. That's they do, and even the newer motors that we see, like the B46, the four cylinder uh, B motor, and even the B58, has super weird issues where it has coolant lines on both sides of the motor, and one one side goes, fix it, then a week later the other side goes. So now we're replacing all of it. It's a it's a learning process with newer motors and stuff of what stuff is actually going to go bad and what stuff. We we see and then we constantly are changing our recommendations for customers like now where we are with m54 and m55s you have a valve cover gasket leak you're getting a valve cover yeah because the pcv is built into the valve cover and yep. they fail and it pressurizes the crankcase yeah it puts oil 
basically sucks oil out of the crankcase. Yeah, and we've actually, it's actually an issue on S55s as well. Um, we have customers that come in and they call, they'll call on the phone and be like, hey, my car's making like a whistling sound. Oh, I'm like, cool, you turn need to it stop off driving. Right now. Because literally, it's, it's pressurizing the whole motor. And actually, if you get it, if you drive for long enough, you can push seals out of the back and the crank seal out of the front. Yeah, and you're sucking oil like out of the motor into the intake. Yeah, it's very bad. It's but, bad. But again, that's another one of those things where they designed the PCB system to run internally in the valve cover and they it literally crumbles and shrinks and fails. You can't see it. Yeah. But again, knowing what's wrong is super important. Yeah. So yeah, surgical stainless. Really yeah, nice. It's all TIG welded. Um, yeah. There's an X-pipe built in for the throatiness of it. We actually went through a few different designs. We had an H-pipe design. We had a no no pipe design, just a straight pipe. Isn't it X. wild how much like moving this 10 inches or whatever makes yeah. a sound difference? It makes it cool. sound it makes a sound difference. But again, like when I made the mid pipe, it's made for people with a stock car because I got the the G the JDM three the day it came out, and I thought I was pulling out the Lexus dealer because it was so quiet, and it yeah. literally annoyed me. So I, I told I told Zach and Nick, I was like, guys, you have to make something that just makes the volume a little bit more the way it should have came from the factory. Yeah. Um, and that's what we ended up with. And that's what cool. the point of this is. And we actually make a resonated version now for people that are running uh, downpipes, which makes the car louder. Um, and we do some other uh, stuff with this. We have an X one that we make. So um, it's just a cool thing. We make it all in-house with my fabricators. All the material is all from the USA. Um, it's just a neat thing. It's a really nice product, and it's it's just a cool thing. And I, I never, th I really always wanted to make trucks. Yeah, I'm sure sell. it picks up some power. Too. And it's cool. Yeah, it picks up a little, like 10 horsepower. It's cool to just be able to make something in house and sell it to people, and it really improves the car for a lot of people that aren't going to go crazy with a full exhaust. Yeah, you guys have um, a dyno too, right? We do have a dyno. We have a couple of them. We have one at Winter Park, which is our other store. Um, and then I have a Maha dyno here with a dyno cell that we're building. Oh, sick. Um, which will be totally like air conditioning controlled and all of that. So That's cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you have the other location at Winter Park that's open back up. Which is pretty great. sick. Which is where I first met you. Yeah. And yeah, and we, we built FD car there. Yeah. <laughs> what, so year, what year was that now? Like 2011 and 12, 12, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was the E46, and that was when David was there. And yeah, we did a lot of the E36 stuff there, too. Yeah, yeah, and that's cool. Yeah, that came available this year, and um, another place was there, and we, we bought yeah, the equipment. Yeah, because that was another shop for 10 years, probably. No, eight for years. Five. Five, for five. Five, okay. We've been here five. I haven't been in Orlando for a while. Yeah, so. we've been here for five, and we moved over here. We outgrew that space because it's only 3,500 square feet. Yeah. This building now is 13,000. We're here. Um, this is the main shot, but then we uh, I got the opportunity to get the other one back, and I love it so much because it's in a really cool the industrial area. The location is really cool. Yeah, it's in Winter Park, which is a super nice area in, in Orlando, and it's super industrial. And it's like a night. The building was originally built in 1948. It was originally a service station like shop, and it's always been that way. Yeah. So we renovated it and opened it back up. We have a Dyno Jet linked all-wheel drive Dyno in the ground over there. Uh, we do a lot of our tuning over there. Um, Alexis, Alexis is over there. Um, so that's another store, another location, really an extension of the shop because we really do we do everything that we do here. This is an exception. We do only the fabrication here. We have the alignment rack here, but over there we can do almost everything that we do here. Um, but you know, if we drove over there right now, it's like forty-five minutes. Yeah. So typical it's Orlando bit, thing. It's but like that's completely <laughs> different in the customer aspect of it too, which is good because you like get that good quality and ability to do all <clears> different <throat> types of projects. And like I'm imagining it being like, oh, longer term restoration project, maybe it comes here. 100%. And then yeah. some quicker like maintenance stuff, get people back. They don't have to take the trip out to here 100%. when they live yeah. in Orlando. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally making the shop bigger in another location and not complicating things. Like, right. People call me and they email me and they want to bring an E30 to do an S52 swap. We're doing it at the big store. Yeah. We have more room. I have room to store the motors. I have everything there. There's a quick store, but also a place we can send people that want to do before and after. Hey, I want a carbon air box. Can you put my car in the dyno before and after? Yeah. yeah. Let's go to Warner Park, go see Alexis. Yeah, so. that's, it. that's cool. It's cool that you're doing product, too. The product thing is neat. Like, it's a, an extension of what you guys do and what you've learned. So it's like, you can have an exhaust company go and build something, and it will work, and it will bolt onto the car. Yeah. But for stuff like this, like, you're in the field, you're working, you know like what needs to be changed. You have something that you're like, that annoys me. And it gets put into a product to make it better, yeah, you know, yeah. so it's cool. And I mean, our second product that we now have been selling a lot of is I make a really specific brake pad for the, again, for the new M3 and M2s and M4s. 
that cuts brake dust. Mm. It's a it's a compound that is made. The brake pads are made in Japan. It's a special compound that really because the, the number one complaint we hear on the brake cars dust. is I love my car, but five minutes later my wheel is covered Brown. with brake dust. <laughs> and most of the customers that are driving their M3 and 4 are not tracking the car. So it's a ceramic pad, but it literally cuts brake dust by 80%, and it doesn't change the pedal feel. That's good. It's a little bit different, but it doesn't change it completely. And obviously, nine days, if I gave you the car to drive with the pads, you wouldn't tell me, oh, this has ceramic pads. Right. So that's cool. Um, so we came out with that, and that was another thing that really was bothering me too. Yeah, because I always want to have clean car, wheels. Like. I want to have, you know, I want to have clean wheels and have a nice car. So anyway, that's another product we've been selling, and it's around the same lines. It fixes an issue, right? But it's something we can do, and it, it's a super nice product like this. Uh, and this is cool too because the guys make it here. Yeah. They see the jig. It's a job for someone too. Yeah. Like, and it's I don't send it to Asia and have it built for nothing. Right. It's cool. So it's, it's cool. a neat thing we can do, and um, we'll keep we'll keep making. It. Yeah, sick. Um, so these are kind of like a f current flagship cars. Yeah, I would say so. Of PSI. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the E91 that we built for SEMA last year for Pitt and Paddock and Bilstein. Big uh, wagon guy right here. Yeah. You're um, after my heart. Like, this is almost, I should drop a car off to you and get it done. You <laughs> almost. You should. I should, probably. You should. Yeah, well, we have a crazy... I want an like, S52 spot one, though. S52 E90? Yeah. Okay. We'll put a bone stock one in so <laughs> you make a 90 one. wheel. <laughs> it would be like a 330. I should have just left the motor that came you in. You should it. also do auto. That'll be way more reliable. DCT. Okay. N54, DCT. The worst. So just whatever it could possibly be. Yeah, I'll make sure we moved out of the building when you drop it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so built this for SEMA. I remember seeing this getting loaded up to go to SEMA and I was like, what? I didn't even know they were building it. I was just across the street at BC and I was like, that is it. Yeah. So this was a commission build for Pitt and Paddock um, and, and for Bilstein. Uh, Turn 14 was involved with the build, and, and Daryl from Turn 14 called me and said, hey, I have an idea for a project car. We're building it with our partners. Can you guys do it? And we said, yeah. So we, we built it for them. And the cool thing about it is it's, it was for SEMA. It was in the Turn 14 distribution booth at SEMA. But it's also doing a tour. Um, it's going out to the Grid Icon Show, which is at the end of March. They're putting on a show in Long Beach that's NA and really cool. BMW NA stuff, so they're gonna cool. have BMW CCA is gonna be there with all the race cars. That's sick. Um, this is gonna be there, and then this has a really cool trip around the world that it's gonna do. I'm not gonna tell you what that is, but it, it goes on a tour, and that's why I wanted to do this car. I wanted to build the car because it's super cool, because it's literally our whole demeanor with the car was we wanted to build an E91 M3 wagon the way BMW would have built it, but also with the GTS splashed in, which yeah. is where you get the fire orange color, right. and where you get like a motorsport lip, and some of the, you know, BBS E88. Well, this color goes back a little bit too with PSI, because you had one of these Correct. in the E90. I did, yeah. One. No 20, E92. In E92, I had a 2013 manual. Um, with a bunch of little GTS bits. GTS and bits, too. of course. And, and then, you know, Daryl has an E92 M3, and he dailies an E90 wagon. So it literally oh, is like perfect. taking the two cars that he has and making it into this. That's amazing. And this has always been a dream build for me, but I it's wanted it to be car. done. It is a dual car. And the chassis is so amazing. And the cool thing is, is that we got the wagon here. And of course we got the M3. So what we did is we bought a donor E90 M3 because it was the sedan. Yep. And then we bought a really nice 328 wagon and made this. And this has all M3 everything. All right, pop the hood, let's see it. This thing is sick. So for me, it's the do-all because wagon, space. It's the do-all because it's like an OEM BMW build with some flair that you would do to a normal E92 and some other things. So it's got S65, some airbox mods here. Yeah, it says the Eventury plenum and full intake on it. Sick. And what you don't see is this is actually the 4.6 liter stroker motor for oh, the Carbon. Oh man. Um, so this is a, again, Big a throwback. Spice. <laughs> it's, it's a throwback to the GTS. The GTS has actually a 4.4 liter. Yeah. So we went a little bit bigger just to kind of turn it up a little bit. So this How is much power four, is this? Just over 500 horsepower NA. Okay. Um, and it makes in the 440, 450s for torque, which is a quite a bit of torque. Got so it. if you're used to driving an S65 and an M3, a, a stock one, 
and you drive a 4.6 oh, liter, which the stock one's four liter, you drive a 4.6, you can tell instantly. And literally it's funny because when we got done with the car, we weren't really driving it long distance. We were driving it and testing it, make sure everything worked before SEMA. I knew moving the car in the parking lot. Yeah. That it was, it made more power and more Well, it torque. probably makes a hundred foot pounds of torque more. Yeah, it does. It's probably crazy. Yeah. It's That's sick. Day. It's night and day. Is this still rev um, all the way? Absolutely. Okay, so what's yeah. it rev to? I think 80, 8250. Sick. I think is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, sick. So even a little more than stock. Yeah, I think stock is, I think stock's 83. So I think this is 8350. Is that still like a stock cam scenario? Yeah, we did the stock cams. Okay, perfect. Um, it has so lots of torque. It has, the, uh, it has the BMW Motorsport water pump on it, okay. which is one of the things that we did when we did the rebuild. Um, because do has, all, it's got to go to the track too. and got to be able to be driven and have fun with. 100%. Well, the idea of the whole car, of building this car, was it wasn't going to be a SEMA build where it goes to Vegas for four days and then it goes into where they store the Ark of the Covenant in Indiana <laughs> Jones and you never see the car. The, the point of this car and the way Daryl sold me the job and wanting to be a part of it is they've been driving the car. They've been going everywhere with it. It's going to be track. It's going to go overseas. It's going to go to Europe. We're going to do some tracks and stuff over there. The car's going to be used and then tur turn 14 is going to give the car away oh sick yeah That's so cool. um it has a really cool journey um i was just looking at some stuff so obviously it was a full paint job completely yeah, so this was stripped samuels down, did this stripped down to, yeah brad did it samuels yeah, it's got the oem satin underneath yeah so we did oem satin finish all underneath new the hood. stickers yeah brand new stickers exactly how they would have come because i had an e90 uh we had an e90 fire orange here so this is the exact sticker this car would have um which means this is individual special order like special special color is what this means and it has the uh, fire orange color thing all of this is all oem i reordered all the stickers from bmw this is germans um but we went with the satin finish just like oem yep um and this is actually a little brighter satin to make it just a touch nicer yeah and then the brighter. paint the paint still has the factory orange peel but it's just reduced a little bit because i didn't want this to be a pebble beach concourse paint yeah. even though brad could do it oh yeah it would look artificial right you just want a little oem plus yeah That's i wanted it. it to look like you could park it in the showroom at bmw and someone would say i never knew they made that Right. That's what we well, went Well, truthfully, for. like, you would look at this, 99% or more of people would be like, oh, sick. They yeah. painted a wagon orange and put the VA stuff in it. Like, yeah. they, because it, they don't even think, like, no. that it didn't no. happen. That's no. cool. But um, as, And know, then the body, too. Yeah, so the body... Um, the M3s have a totally different front clip. So yeah. we actually, you can actually transfer over the hood, the fenders, the bumper, and everything. And the subframe is all from the E90 M3. And then in the rear, which a lot of people don't do on these on these cars, is those are real E90 M3 fenders that are grafted into the wagon so that they have the exact, we literally measured it with lasers and every other thing Sick. to make sure it was identical to the E90 and the way that the wide body is set up. So cool. again, it's an OEM route. So all of this area here, like not, so it's basically this is M3. And then, cool. um, and that's grafted in brand new M3 fenders we put on. Also, E88s, perfect, 18s. 265, and then what's in the back? I think 295. 295. Woo -hee. That's sick. Yeah. That's sick. Um, and then here we are in the back of the car, which was one of the most difficult parts. I was going to say. The rear bumper was really difficult because it has to be M3 from here to match the wide body. And then, but then on the can't bottom, because this is M3 and it yep. has to match for the exhaust. But then all this is different. But all, yeah, up here, all this is different because fenders are wagon, Tail lights light. are wagon, hatch, hatch is wagon. Yep. So that took a lot of work. Um, we it actually, looks OE. yeah, it, it came out really it's good. Perfect. We actually took the parts off of the two donor because the two donor cars that we bought were running and driving cars. There were they weren't half of a car. One wasn't found in the ocean. They were two running and driving cars, and we took this, the bumpers that were on the cars and we and we mocked up this bumper. And then once we knew what we were going to do, I bought two brand new bumpers and yep. we fused them together and made this nitrogen um, welding. Or that was the yeah. It's actually yeah. We did plastic welding yep. with them. Um, that was all stuff that, that, that Brad did at the body shop. We should talk about how to pronounce the brand of this. Yeah, so exhaust. that's uh, so this is a period correct Akrapovich exhaust for the Akrapovich. E90 and E90. Yeah, it's Akrapovich. Not Akrapovich, Akrapovich, yeah. whatever the hell. No, no, Akrapovich. Of yeah, it's Akrapovich.
the cool thing about this exhaust and Akrapovich is that this is one of the first automotive exhausts that they made. They made E63 M6 and they made E92 M3 back when they launched the automotive brand in 2008. So because Turn 14 Distribution is the North American distributor of Akrapovich, we got a special set for this project uh, cool. as, a, as a part of it. And a lot of things that you don't see underneath is this has the full suite of SPL arms. I was going to say SPL, I saw yeah, it. Has, Dude, the SPL stuff is it's amazing. so nice. It's amazing, and it gives us that adjustability because we're running some crazy aggressive E88s. These are slicer spec E88s, which are super aggressive. It's, I always call it the German like Nürburgring look. Yeah. Because it's the most aggressive wheel you can fit. I think the yeah. front's like an ET12, which That's is sick. kind of unheard of in yeah, the Yeah, you got some camber in there. You got some camber. Um, but it's not excessive, so it's good. It works. It yeah. works. Uh, and the tire the fitment's good. It like, works with the look. And you know, for me, these parts that are on the car are, are period correct. We're not going to put like some new fangled carbon fiber wheel right. on a car that's from 2011. Like E88s were, the, were raced on these cars, they yeah. match the look, and, and that makes the car. So that's um, a big thing though. Like that's the difference between a shop and like enthusiasts. Like, yeah. like you get it and you understand it. And like obviously if somebody wants to put some fancy carbon wheels or whatever on their car, you you can. 100%. But yeah, like but, for your but I'm always going to be period I mean, I'm, correct. I'm very black and white. I'll tell somebody my opinion on what I think. We'll, we'll do whatever customers want to do, but I like to share. And then the other cool thing is we found a really nice set of BMW performance seats, which are actually a BMW part number Recaro oh, okay. Sportster. They were Sportster. Th well, they are, but these were the ones, and, and we'll open up the door and you can see them. These are actually say BMW Performance on them. They're the period correct style. Then we redid the whole interior to match that style with the leather and Alcantara. So let's open that yeah, up. Yeah, let's check it out. That. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So these are exactly how the seats come from BMW. It's Alcantara. This is actually the black. Uh, deep black Alcantara with leather and, the and then we inserts. carried yeah silver silver stitching so we carried that through with the interior so the nice. center console is the same deep black Alcantara with the silver stitching we actually carried it over to the door cards as well so it matched carried that Alcantara in That's cool. um, the other thing that we did is we did the whole entire headliner Alcantara. A B and C pillar in anthracite Alcantara which nice. is different from the deep black but anthracite Alcantara is what BMW uses with their uh, you know headliners and That's everything really cool. OEM um, and then we kind of went in and restored uh, some of the pieces. That's a new Alcantara wheel from BMW uh, Motorsport. And then all the trim and everything, whatever needed to be replaced or done, we ordered that and got it brand new from BMW. Yeah. That's um, what's sick about BMW too, is you can get everything OE, even the older stuff for the most part. Yeah. Like yeah. all these other manufacturers, like the car gets to be 20 years old, it's done. You can't get any parts for it. Yeah. But BMW like and, and all of their like suppliers like still make all this stuff. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, and then if you go in the back, so we did full custom uh, bench and back, and it has the same scalloping here oh, right. that the, the, front, the front seats have. Yeah. And we even carried it over to the armrest as well. It's kind of a neat oh, that's kind of a touch yeah, that's that has nice. it. Um, and then if you zoom in right here, really subtly, it's laser etched Alcantara. It says E91 GTS, oh, wow. which was also oh, the, the logo sick. that we did. The details are the most important thing on these cars and what makes it super special, especially to me and to people that care about super nerdy BMW stuff. Yeah. Um, it's what separates this kind of stuff um, when you look at it from a, from a kind of an outside perspective. So the other thing I'll show you is, so <clears throat> almost all the wagons in the States are gray, are gray in the back. So all of these plastics are all gray. So we actually ordered all black from Europe. From Europe and those yeah. took the longest to get out of all the stuff we had to order. I imagine. Um, so all of this is all brand new from BMW black, all the wagon stuff that tied in with the black, uh, you know, headliner and all of this. And then this again has the logo here. Oh yeah, it's sick. Um, laser etched into the Alcantara. That's really cool. So just fun, subtle stuff that just makes the car. Yeah, it's that OE. The elevated. OE yeah. plus feel, yeah, you know. 100%. All right, what is this thing? I don't know anything about this. I knew some about this build. So M2. So this is the new M2. It's a 2023 J87 M2. And this has the Adro oh, body yeah, we're kit. we're at J now. G, yeah, we're at G. G, sorry. Uh, well, G is this. Next is G, uh, yeah, H, I think H? we're H-I. <laughs>
It's like crazy. They had they hung on to E for a really long time. They did. And then now they're just gonna blast through letters quick. They are. They're doing so many models and so much stuff. Well, BMW like, makes like 700 different cars right now. They do. It's yeah. insane. They do. So I, I call. I like to call the M2. This is our shop build M2. I like to call this the reciprocal of this build because this is like a new age, yeah. new fangled, new look, like aggressive, modern, aggressive. like modern aggressive car. And um, and this is Adro is a body kit company from South Korea. They have Williams F1 aerodynamic engineers that actually help actually make the parts, which Sick. is crazy. Um, and this was a car we had at SEMA. It was actually, it actually our, the booth for where this was was actually next to where this was. Oh, sick. So we had this car at SEMA too. And this has a special wrap on it from a nose attack, which is a limited edition uh, wrap color, which I liked because it reminded me of Techno. Yeah. So I was going back and forth with Greg at a nose attack about what color we were going to wrap the car because I wanted to do something really cool with this body kit because of how aggressive it was. Yeah. And he's like, I have a purple. I'm like, I like purple. Yeah. Send it to me. And he sent me a photo. And I literally said, is this supposed to be techno violet? Because what, what they do a lot is recreate a color right. in a wrap. Yeah. So it's a little bit different, but it's It's awesome. like right in between techno and Daytona. It is, yeah. But then its own like chrome type look to it. Yeah, it's called, um, I think it's called, uh, it's called amethyst ash because the metallic in it is gray. Got so it's it. gray to purple. That's what gives it the like Daytona look. Yeah. 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 Got it. Um, on this car, when we did the wrap, we actually did the door jams and, oh, okay. the, and the doors. Who did the wrap on so, it? So Tahir did it at Guardian Wraps. Okay. He does all the wraps and stuff for us. So we actually took the doors off the car. Yeah. Uh, because I wanted it to have a cohesive look and not be light blue in the door when you Correct. opened it. And oh, it just, manual It too. just makes it. Yeah, Sick. so this is a manual car. Um, this has kind of a slew of modifications. This is so far past my knowledge with BMW. Uh, mine stops at like these cars. Yeah. I'm old, dude. Well, again, I mean, this is the spectrum of what we do here at the shop, and this just kind of shows the, the different, you know, the differences in the cars and the nature of it. So this um, is S58. This right? is S58. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, I has, knew something. I knew something. So this has the full, like, CSF suite of heat exchangers and everything on it. It's got three even, even sure, yeah, three-way AST, uh, 5300s, uh, which is sort of a track setup for the car that we've been running. It this has, bar um, is crazy. Yeah, it's a load adjustable, which yeah. you know is is up for debate on whether it actually does bad. something. Yeah. Um, but it, it was meant to look. BMW has a really really bad looking strut bar on the stock cars. It's like made it's of like hot metal. metal. It's like terrible. Yeah. So it's one thing it's we like changed. It's like OE plus looking. That's cool. Yeah, and, um, and the carbon tubes are a nice touch. Yeah, it just makes it. It elevates how nice it is. Um, and this Dude, those has intakes are crazy. This has like a piggyback on it. Um, makes probably 550 horsepower. Oh, sick. Um, so. It's just for fun, and this is the new age stuff, and this is the only real only place you can see the color is so under he here. Because yeah. uh, he did the inside here. of the fenders too. Yeah, this yeah. just just gets crazy if you're gonna wrap it. Like it's a motor yeah. out scenario. You can't, yeah, you can't really do it. Um, this front end is wild, dude. Yeah, it's, it's so modern, aggressive break. with ducting built in and everything. Yeah, so um, those are the BMW M Performance inserts that are left and right, and then this is a one piece uh, front lip from Adro. So what's going on with the coolers here? So so AC. So the front thing that you see is a condenser. Yep. But the front lower cooler you can see if you look from the top. Yep. It's actually the oil cooler. That's the oil cooler. And then what's on the sides? They have an additional oil cooler. Heat exchanger for then, the. And then um, the heat exchanger is behind the condenser. Okay. Got it. And there's also on the auto cars there's a transmission cooler. It's also up there. Yeah, so I, we were talking about this the other day, um, but like the complexity of all the cooling system stuff now is pretty wild. So like you have all of these hoses, coolant, reroutes, all the different coolers. And to be truthfully honest, they work amazing. Mm -hmm. They were built that way for a reason. The cars, like most of these cars you can take to the track now and yeah. thrash on them and they're Come fine. Yeah. But that's at the cost of like a lot more hoses, a lot more yeah. everything because we're used to, or at least I am used to, going to the track with a 250, 300 horsepower car and being like, oh, I need to upgrade the radiator, right? But now you're like 550 plus, it's still gonna make heat, it's still gonna have efficiency yeah. issues. And like they nail it now most of the time with that stuff. Yeah, and when they cool. don't, they like there's enough manufacturers out there that just make a piece that will 
OEM bolt yeah. in to upgrade. Yeah, and like we're a development partner with CSF, so they do a lot of different stuff, and and like the, the CSF stuff is just a better solution because a plastic intake becomes metal. Yeah. You can't really, because of the packaging of these motors, you can't make a radiator that's much larger and much no. thicker because it has to fit in the front clamshell. So it needs to just but they be just, more they just engine, yeah, they engineer the fins nicer. They make it a double, a dual pass. It's just a nicer unit that fits because it has to fit. It's like when we do an upgraded turbo system on this. You can't just pick turbos off the shelf no. and put them on. It has to fit in the packaging. Well, and realistically, you really want to just make the turbos that are in there have bigger wheels and rebuild 100%. them. 100%. Because it you, have a, you have a set of room. And when I say the package, I mean the surface area that the parts take up. Because they fit in a really specific place and you have that space to work with. So that, that's your limitation, really. Yeah. Um, it's cool, turbos. though, because it, it does. It changes the game a little bit. Like, you know, you see, or you saw in the early 2000s and all that, people start rebuilding a lot of these turbos into bigger stuff, like OEM stuff. Yeah. And now it's evolved to be like, oh, we have a VGT turbo, and like we're rebuilding it to be bigger, but still retain the VGT, and the performance and all that stuff is just much better because of it. So this has, you know, this has some, uh, it has Eventure intakes, it has a Daler piggyback box. We have some Big really breaks. cool, like Vorsteiner uh, forged wheels on it. We also have, uh, this also has a Kropovich exhaust, obviously, we still have a proper bitch delivery uh, for when we did some work with some tours. Some big wheels in the back, um, too. They're, they're 20s, and man, they're just super aggressive. They're really low offset. I think they're ET4 in the front. Okay. <laughs> These cars run. Which um, is sick. So, and I wanted for this look, I wanted an E88 look, but with a new age design. Yeah. And with to all the make pocketing it match, and cutting yeah, and shit. Just a little bit nice. more advanced, like styling. Um, and it's low. Yeah, we have it super low. For this type of car, it's very low. It's all for fun. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all for fun. This wing is cool um, too. I like the yeah. additional cuts here. Yeah, it's super nice. They really spent a lot of time with the design uh, with it. And then the cool thing is, is this has, you know, uh, to, I'll be honest, and I've said this in the in the, the video that I made about the M2. When I saw the renderings of this kit, I loved the wing, I loved the front, but the diffuser was not my wasn't my favorite because of the way it stuck out. But once we got it on the car. And if you look at it from the side, the it kind of matches the, the yeah. Of it. And I actually love it now. But the cool thing is, is this this car also has the Acropovich exhaust on it, and these are the octagonal and yeah, carbon fiber tips, looking. and these are specific tips for the G Series BMWs. So you can't order, you know, a GR Corolla Acropovich and get these tips. These are for the BMW, and it matches the aggressiveness of the car, which to me is super cool with Acropovich the because they're not only designing an exhaust that's titanium and super lightweight, but they want to match the styling yeah. of the car, which is, you know, which is awesome. People see this car and they have no idea even what it is. Oh, it's like a Batmobile. Yeah, dude. it's crazy. <laughs> it's um, aggressive. Like this, this to me is really sick. I have like a lot of respect for how cool it is. It's not something that's like for me, because I'm more simple like we talked about, but it's still like done in a way that has, it's tasteful. It's not yeah. so over the top that you're like, what the hell is that thing? Yeah, but it's also, it's for fun. It's for people to come in, they just got their M2, bone stock, they see this and they can look at everything on it. They can pick the parts and having it here yeah. in the parking lot, someone comes in they're like, I don't know what I can do to my car. I'm like, here you go, let's all go see, of it. Let's go see the car that we built. And that's really why we do it. And we also do it, like I said previously, like. We do it, we get the new cars, and we take them apart and build them so that we learn the cars. You know, yeah. the guys that we have here have a ton of experience with JD M3, JD2, and then JD7. Um, we can Especially take the whole entire thing apart. When you're learning about it like that in like a non-stressful environment, when yeah. you're not like yeah. worried about the customer being like, they're they're gonna wonder how long we had the car, this and that. Yeah. And like you can just go through and look at it and massage it and feel it out and figure it out. Yeah, I really like the wing. It's actually cool. I would put that yeah. on. Well, the one thing we kind of skipped is the front grills because this has the F80 style front grills, which oh, is something right. major added. Right. So we can talk about that, and then we can start the cars up maybe and drive. I mean, I'll drive whatever, dude. Let's go. So, um, so the one thing that I want to point out is this has the vertical slat grills, which is well known on E90, E36, and from the factory, these cars have horizontal grills, which was very controversial. Um, so when Adra came out with their body kit, they went ahead and made carbon vertical slide cool. grills, which changes the Little whole front homage end. thing there. Yeah, yeah, so. That's cool. Um, they're still too big. They're, yeah, they're, <laughs> yeah. It's actually, 
this is a very touring car feel from here though yeah. like race car touring car yeah like it's 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 functional and like i like that like when you look through the grills and their design you're seeing all the cooling and all the things behind it like yeah. You know, like it has a purpose and a function, which is cool to me. I think a lot of the newer BMWs that don't have that feel is why I don't like it. It's not the fact that the big grills look stupid. Like, I don't know that it looks stupid. To me, the 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 like fact of it being like it's such a huge hole for no reason to me. Yeah. But like this looks like it has a purpose. Yeah, it's functional for sure. Yeah. And it's and it's just it's different. Which is what I really like about the design. I mean, it's it's, it's again, it's controversial. I'm sure people will make the bar think face. That's, that's like better. I feel like. And, I mean, every post we would make, it was 50-50 bar faces, or we love the car. Who would which, say which that the fine. vertical grill is not well, just better? Just the whole looking. car. Well, well, well yeah. Okay. I mean, people say that. Yeah. The whole, but I better. see the whole car thing because it's a lot, right? Yeah. And if you're not ready for a lot, it's all mind space, dude. If you're not ready for a lot, you got this car. Yeah. Like that's perfect. Yeah. Or you have the traditional E39 or you have a competition getting to it. Yeah, or a sick Audi. <laughs> or an Audi Quattro that you won't mention. You know what the coolest car in this parking lot is, though? What? Miata is always the answer. Oh, yeah. Or Yoda. But this is another side of the shop. This is where I used to work at BC out developing shit all the time. Yeah, so this is the same, just continuation of the shop. This yeah. is where Adam LZ was with his yeah, shop. Yeah, he yeah. was in the back. He rented from, uh, from me, actually, in this building. But this is our special kind of program shop where Adam, my tech, works. This is where we built the E91. So if you check out our channel, the E91 was built here. In the shop, yeah. Um, but again, this is that same black Cosmos car that we're doing the restoration stuff on. We're putting some glass headlights. And then behind us, we have a crank hub. So we're doing a crank hub on this F80. Um, Adam is getting everything kind of ready to go cool. to complete it, but this is part of the breakdown. The valve cover is off. Dude, the head the design is pulled out. The way the cams sit in the caps and everything in this motor is so bizarre. Yeah, it's it's um, definitely specific to BMW is the best way to say it. <laughs> specific <laughs> is the right way to say it. It has also a lot of specific um, tools and software. Yes. Yeah, and this is a really involved job to yeah. just tear it down to be able to do this. Um, timing tools have to go on because the motor comes out of time. Um, we also replace timing chain tensioner. We do a lot of seals and a lot of new stuff gets replaced when we do the service. Uh, but this is paired with some performance. So we're actually doing pure stage two turbos on this car. Nice. It's gonna have a CSF charge cooler. Uh, we're upgrading the charge pipes. Uh, we're doing an exhaust. It's just getting those full bolt-ons, uh, and this will have upgraded fueling, um, and we'll do a tune on the dyno with the car. What do these uh, make with full bolt-ons? 700s. Jesus. Like high, high sixes, pump gas, when you start getting the 85, it gets into the 700, and then like low sevens, and then you need port injections for yeah. you know higher, mid, kind of higher to mid sevens. I feel yeah, like 650, 700 is... Really, is, all you ever need. I think this car with full bolt-ons with stage twos, like mid sixes, mid to high sixes, 650, 680, is perfect yeah. in this car. That's how it should be. Uh, it's hybrid turbo, so it has no lag. Like, it has Shit a sick torque. Yeah, sick torque. It's just really nice car. Yeah. Um, so, this is pretty typical what we do uh, with these cars, you know, week in and week out uh, with the F chassis. Yeah, because this is really involved and really common. Yes. Like this is like one of those things where like it's like when you go to sell this car or you do anything if the crank hub's not fixed like you literally are deducting the price of that job from the car when you sell it. So like yeah. everyone should just yeah. do it anyway. Yeah, so the the crazy thing is the OEM crank hub has a friction disc in between it and that's all that keeps it from spinning. Yeah. It keeps the motor in time. So what we do is we drill it four places with a jig and the new crank hub from Evolve has four pins and it goes into the holes yeah. and locks it down. The and then there's a brand new bolt beginning. that goes in that has a specific torque and then it will never fail. The four pins will never fail. The brand new torque torque to yield bolt is in there. It's a it's a fix. It 100% works. And um, But it's, it's just, it's just involved. You know, yeah, because it's like yeah, absolutely. the crank hub fixes a one time one and done and then you can not worry about it at all you know i've like we've talked about you see people spin the crank hub in a stock car on a downshift yeah it's like yeah. so it's again wild. it's a preventative maintenance but yeah. Um, but yeah so the the shifts are very fast and dct like that's the gts uh, tune part the drivability is really nice like 
the shifting is good, but power band and the delivery, I feel like when I drive an E90, I'm leaving my foot in the same spot of the throttle, but I'm feeling the power band come in, yeah. where this just like hit and had it already, yeah. and it was smooth all the way through. Yeah. It's meant to do all and do everything really well, but it's probably premise is a build where it can be street driven and be really enjoyable. Yeah, and I mean, the pre the premise of the GTS was that it was a club sport car from BMW. And, you know, I'll explain what a club sport is. Really in Europe, a club sport car is a car you drive to the track, drive on the track, and drive back. So that's a lot of the GT3 RSs with the cages. That's the GTS with the roll bar and the, the fixed back seats. And this yep. doesn't have a roll bar. This has adjustable back seats, but yep. still sport seats. So we backed Matches it off nicely. from Club Sport, but it's um, it's OEM plus plus. Also, for those viewers that don't know, this is an eight individual throttle body, eight throttle body motor. Yeah. Like two banks, four on each side. Dude, like, the mid range torque. Yeah, it's sick. It's so good. What would be sick is this stroker motor in like an E46 or E36. Like this motor, manual, would be, yeah. would be nuts, I think. I okay, so just to give that. you the idea, like I'm at 3,000 RPM right now. Normally, when you hit it in this car, this uh, a, regu a regular S85, you could have a coffee to the top full <laughs> and not spill it. Yeah. I'm actually at 2,500, and it's like, dude, the grunt is yeah, real. It's sick. And that's what you feel on the street. A lot of the things I say to customers is I tell them torque is for the street and horsepower is for the track. Yeah. And you feel the torque around town. That's what you're, you're driving in torque around town. When yep. you go and you rev it out and you're, you're revving it out on the track and doing that, that's when you can feel the horsepower that it's making. Like, oh, yeah. It's good. It's a do all, that's what I was saying. It's like, you could take this car to the track, you would drive really well, it would put down good lap times and be very like uh, comprehensive. But you could also bring your whole family there to hang out and watch. And you could, you know, drive cross country in something like this. Yeah. And if you had any problems realistically, you'd be able to to have it handled. Steer's good, super drivable, seats are comfy. Like Recaro obviously does a really good job of balancing a look of aggressiveness. And then being the fact that it's a factory built, like BMW performance seat is rad, airbags built into it. Yeah, and I mean, the interior stuff that we did, like this Alcantara and then the seat, it it has the OEM feel and it doesn't like, you. you, you everyone has seen cars with custom interiors. And when you think custom interior, I think of like a, a quilted purple, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Take like, my and, ride, and that's not, and I, and I wanted to do a nice interior in this, but I didn't want to do it over the top. Yeah, that's and really I good. think we, we did well with that other than, I mean, again, if I didn't explain it, it wasn't OEM, people really wouldn't know. Yeah, people would just think it's a fancy version yeah. of OEM plus yeah. or OEM. Like, don't take it over 7500. I thought I was in drive still. You're good, it's fine. I mean, we've, we've that thing it. zinged just... all the way, dude. <laughs> it's good, it's good. That's yeah, what it's meant to do. It's good. My bad. You're good. I'm not worried about it. No, it's just me. I broke a rule. He's like, don't rev it to the moon. Took it to the moon, sat it there on the moon. So I figured out why it was mooning. Yeah, you guys built some really good cars. This is a really good car. Yeah, thanks, man. I feel like you could offer this build service for people. Yeah, we, we want to, and we've had some interest with it um, to do it. I really want to build a Santorini blue one. That'd be cool. Um, which was a real, would be a really great, great one. And I, and I want to do a race car one. I want to do a caged Kevlar seat, like super aggressive one. That could be cool. Um, like too. body and white type, yeah. like almost yeah. like a like studio type build, yeah. like body kit type. So this has an M3, an E91 M3 OEM harness. 
because we, cool. we made it. Yeah, just depinned it. Yeah, it That's just cool. repinned it and unpinned it, repinned it, and that then sounds like put in the modules. It was a nightmare. We have a video on it. We program every module. We had to, yeah, we had to reprogram certain ones. It was, it's just, um, but it's a labor of love for us because again, I want it to be OEM. I want it to communicate yeah, OEM. I agree. There's no lights on the dash. Nope. Like there's no nothing that would tell you works. that something's not working. Everything works. Um, and it's and it's that's the point of it to me. I mean, anyone could build a car. Anyone could put a motor in a car and have the car run and, and maybe be fast and, and drift and race. And yeah, but maybe. to make all the OEM stuff work yeah. as it came from BMW is what's really hard. Yeah. And um and that's what makes the car be a nice car. That's kind of why right. I was saying, like, I feel like this should be an offering, like, so that people can have this. Right? 100%. Like, yeah. It's, it's a timeless car, too, right? Like, this car, when it, when it's in, when E90s, E91s, all E9X are in good shape, you're like, that's a really good looking car. And it's the last of a generation that is like how BMW was. Yeah, it's, I'm not it saying is. good or bad, newer, worse, better, whatever. I'm no. just saying. It, it, it's kind of like the bookend to that. It's a line in the sand because the S65 V8 and the S85 V10 were M M3 and M5 in A, and then after that, the next M3 turbo. was twin turbo. The next M5 front end, was twin go. turbo. That's me. Like, uh, you know, the <laughs> next the next V8 is twin turbo. So like, what it is a line in the sand, and it really marks the period right. for BMW. Exactly. That's kind of what I was saying. Like this, yeah. like you should be offering this because it's like a time piece. Yeah. So, well, so. we are. So if you guys have any questions on the build, hit us up yeah, and check so out the YouTube works. channel. And um, yeah, thanks, Chelsea. No worries. Good to see you, man. Thanks for doing this.